Welcome to the Kings Island Central Podcast. KICentral.com is Kings Island's ultimate fan site. Now, here's your host, Robbie Zerhusen. Welcome to podcast episode number 18 of the Kings Island Central Podcast. Joining me is Brad Perdue. Hello. And we have special guest Tyler Mullins, whose screen name on KIC is Tomb Raider Ty. Hello. So, Tyler, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Tyler, and I'm a big fan of Kings Island's history. I actually, uh, as I believe Brad is going to allude to later, had the chance to edit and rewrite a lot of KI Central's history pages for all the defunct attractions, as well as the timeline. Uh, I grew up in the Ohio Cincinnati area, worked at Kings Island for many years in high school and college. And even though I'm no longer in Ohio, I still really enjoy getting back up to Kings Island, visiting it several times a year. And I'm just still a huge fan of the history. I think Kings Island history is one of the coolest histories of all the different regional amusement parks across the US. So I always enjoy talking about it, researching it, and being able to share it. Do you consider yourself a roller coaster enthusiast? I definitely like roller coasters and definitely have done a lot of them. So I would say so, yeah. I think most people who are on a website like Chaos Central probably have a roller coaster enthusiast of some kind inside of them. Right. What is your favorite ride at Kings Island and why? Uh, I'm a little, little split on this one. Uh, when I worked at Kings Island, I was able to work at Adventure Express for several years. I acknowledge the ride itself can be a little underwhelming, a little anticlimactic, but I think it's still a really good, fun family ride, and I have that sentimental connection to it. Um, I'm a little torn, though, because I also really, really like Mystic Timbers, not only because it's a great ride, but after I worked at Kings Island, I had the chance to intern at Great Coasters and work on Mystic Timbers when they were building the ride. So I'm very attached to that one as well. So I can't choose between those two. But anytime I make it to Kings Island, I make sure I do both of them. I tell you, Adventure Express is a very underrated ride in general, but especially a night ride. I know that's been discussed on KI Central quite a bit. Uh, getting a night ride on that is, is pretty pretty good. And it's uh, in incredible how nice it's been refurbished over the past, I don't know if it was a year or two years, when I had the chance to ride it just in September or in October, it blew me away. Like all the lighting that they had refurbished and they had fixed up and the second tunnel, the spears are animated again after probably over 10 years being just standing but not operating so it's yep. a phenomenal experience now well we can definitely thank v uh, vortex bff forever on kic because she works in helping do those types of things at the park now and so i know she worked on that quite a bit that off season to get it back to where it is today and you know as a enthusiast of the park we really appreciate her working on that and the park letting her do it Definitely. I'm glad that the park is, uh, just in general, it seems like they're definitely putting a lot more attention to detail on some of their attractions, even the older ones like Adventure Express. Exactly. So Kings Island history is a very big part of KICentral.com. And as you kind of already mentioned, uh, you helped update the timeline. Well, completely redid it pretty much. Uh, and the past attractions page in our history section on the main site on KICentral.com. For one, thank you for spending the time to do that for us uh, on KIC. Can you tell us about your passion for Kings Island history and how you got started? Yeah, so uh, back when I was a kid in elementary school and I was searching Kings Island online, I actually found the former KI Central uh, competitor, I guess, of uh, ExtremePKI.com, which was later KI Extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, the site recently closed its doors after a long run, but when it was still in operation earlier on, I actually had the chance to be a moderator on that site and contribute to it. And I realized how much I enjoyed the park history. Like I've always loved Kings Island in the present day. I've always enjoyed visiting it, but I think there's something exciting about the past, especially in my situation, the past, I never actually got to go and experience. I was born in the mid nineties. So anything before then is just, I never personally uh, had the chance to experience it, but I've always been drawn to it. I've always found it really interesting how things used to be at this place I know so well. So I think that kind of just fueled a lot of my interest in the park history. Right. And I think it really built over time. Um, on that old website, I had the chance to update 
a lot of the pages similar to how KI Central has them about the past attractions, about the past experiences and events. And I think just over the years, the wealth of knowledge has just kept growing as has the passion for the park and its history. Right. You've accumulated very detailed information about the history of Kings Island. What was your way of researching some of the past rides and details about the park? Yeah, I think there's been a slew of different resources for that. And one of them, which can sometimes go unnoticed, is actually the forums themselves, like on KI Central, formerly KI Extreme. Because the KI Central forums span back almost 20 years, which is incredible. Right. And there's all these firsthand accounts of how things were in the mid 2000s, which, I mean, that's over 15 years ago now, that is actually history. And that was also at that time, not too far away from the 90s or even the late 80s. And so I think a lot of those old posts from some of the older members, many of who are still around posting today, I think those are invaluable. But outside the forums, uh, I love websites like newspapers.com. I love the ability to search thousands and thousands of newspapers, read about the things from when they were first reported on. And I think over the years, I'm able to build a very, very large uh, archive of photos that people have shared. Um, I think it's last time I checked the number of files in this folder was over 10,000, which is incredible. But oh, wow. So just being able to build up that database of sorts, as well as park maps, park brochures, and just having the chance to look at it, review it, study it over the years has really uh, definitely expanded how much I know on the park history. Right. What has been your most shocking information that you found out about Kings Island history? Ooh, it's always fun when you find something which I've discovered in the earlier internet, sometimes somebody will say something and then that something just gets repeated again and again and it kind of is taken as truth and then it turns out it's not the truth. Right. Um, there's been a couple like weird small examples and a big thing is with the dates that things opened or closed. Like one I see a lot is Zodiac, the old double armed Ferris wheel. Yeah. It was uh, opened in 1975 and a lot of sources will tell you it closed in 86 or 87 but then stood standing but not operating for several years, kind of like how Son of Beast did after it closed. Yeah. And that's not true. There's actually photos from Vortex's construction and when they were testing it with employees, and you can see Zodiac in the background being dismantled. The ride did not ever sit standing but not operating for a year or longer. Hmm. So that's like not like crazy shocking, but I just think it's interesting when you have these cases of these things have become taken as fact and they're not actually fact. And it's always exciting when you realize something that's like, wait, this goes against what everyone said or thought. Like there's actual photo or video evidence that contradicts this. Right. Uh, one other fun thing, which I don't have the verification if it's true or not, but something I find fascinating and I suspect it is, is Skylab, which closed in 97. Most people have always assumed it was just scrapped but it actually appears to then just have been relocated to a park in South America and has been operating ever since. And it's still at that park. Hmm. And I'm still trying to like verify if it is actually our ride. It is the same type of ride. It's a Hoos giant enterprise, which there weren't many of those built. Right. Everything's lining up that it is Skylab, but I have yet to be able to, you know, verify hundred percent without any doubt. Right. That one, hmm. that one was really exciting to stumble upon and, that is interesting. Yeah. When you started collecting Kings Island history, did you know what you wanted to do with it? All that information you collected? No, but I'm really glad that I was collecting it because I think with the internet, some people think it's permanent with a lot of these websites. And when someone's posting something, there is truth to the fact it never goes away. But then sometimes it becomes a lot more hard to find so I'm glad that my former high school self had the habit of always saving these photos that people would share and writing down the information. I don't think I ever foresaw using them for anything, which makes me glad I'm sa I saved them at the time. <laughs> so which writer information have you wanted to learn more about that you've found to be the most difficult to obtain? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. 
I have a two-part answer for this one. Oh, okay, uh, good. I love Enchanted Voyage. I never did it because it was gone years before I was born. And there are some videos of it. There's some great photos of it. I think that ride's really interesting with the scale of it because it was a Disney-style ride at a park like Kings Island, a regional park. Right. Normally, you can see that complex, intricate ride. Um, so I'm always excited when I find photos or videos of that attraction. And one of my Kings Island white whales is actually finding blueprints of it or like a layout of the ride just to see how it existed in that building since the building is still present, now home to Boo Blasters as well as a theater and some employee areas. Right. And then I think the other ride, this one is very obscure and I could find very, very little information about it. But I discovered there was a very minor attraction called the Critter Corral in the Hanna-Barbera section. Oh. Um, I believe it was out in the late 1980s. And it's a little hard to describe, but sometimes if you go to the mall back in like the 90s, they had these large animals that a child, fake animals, like little robot animals. And a child could pay and they could ride on the little animal's back as it moved around the mall floor. It's a very quirky little ride experience mm. thing. But Kings Island had one in the late 80s in Hanna-Barbera land. There's video of it there's a couple mentions of it on park maps but otherwise it's super obscure and i don't think most people even realize it ever existed it's being new information to, find, to me yeah being able to find those like small quirky little things is really exciting because you know even though king's island is relatively a young park in comparison to some like cedar point there's still a lot of history and there's still a lot of fun things to discover and learn or in many cases relearn because it happened not too long ago relative to everything. And I don't know about your opinion on this, but it sure seems like the research and history of Kings Island is probably one of the most researched uh, aside from Cedar Point. And even if not a little bit more, it, it seems like there's a lot of interest in learning about that. I think, yeah, I would agree. And I think, uh, I know one of your previous guests on the podcast was Evan Ponstengel, who did the amazing Kings Island history book. Right. And I think after that book was published, the explosion of interest in it, like I kept seeing so many posts on social media and so much excitement behind it. I think that really tells volume to how uh, much people love Kings Island and its history. I think exactly. a lot of people in the area have grown up, been going to the park since they were children. Now they're bringing their own children or grandchildren. And I think Kings Island and its history is very important to those people, which is why I think that there's so much interest behind it. Right. What has been your favorite ride to research? Mm. Enchanted Voyage is always fun, but Phantom Theater, I had the opportunity to ride when I was little. So I do actually have memories of that one. <laughs> so that one's, uh, that one's fun just to see what can be turned up, especially because a lot of the ride still exists in some form. Um, the ride system is mostly still there. There were major modifications made when it was turned into Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Castle, but it's the same layout. It's the same general system. Right. And then a lot of the props and the scenery, they've been reused year after year for Fear Fest and then Halloween Haunt. And even though allegedly, reportedly, many of those are now gone and they were trashed after so long and deteriorating yeah. there are still some examples of those props hidden around the park like in the slaughterhouse you have the old furnace and right i think it's cool when you're able to link king's island history to the present and see where these remnants and the relics still are yeah i agree how was kicentral.com an influence on you with wanting to learn more about the history of king's island i think uh as mentioned, I think the forums are a really, really great tool for research because you have so many firsthand accounts of everything back from the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, and then just a King's KI, KI Central is a really good community of Kings Island enthusiasts. So you have a lot of people with the same with the same interest as you, many of them who had the chance to experience a lot of these former attractions. So I think it's just been a really, really great website to be able to do research, learn this stuff, make connections. I think it's been a really invaluable tool. I agree. 
How many total hours do you think you've spent researching the history of the park? Oh, I don't know if I want to know that answer. Um, <laughs> Microsoft. So this is a jumping a little bit over, but when you were talking about how I learned the stuff, and then I mentioned I used to work at Kings Island. When I worked at Kings Island, I had the idea of there should be a little guide for the employees at the Eiffel Tower because you know they always get asked questions about Kings Island. Yeah. I was like, I should make a little guide for them that they can easily like reference. It's going to have like year by year, just what, the main stuff that happened, what opened, what closed, and then I have an index so they can quickly search. So if somebody asks them about Scream and Demon, they can go to the index, look up Scream and Demon, find the page, give the guest a answer. Um, back when I worked at Kings Island, I had this idea and I started just that small little project, which ended up evolving into a literal 400 page book of Kings Island history. Oh, wow. I've, never, I've never published it. I don't know if I ever will, because at this point, it's just an ongoing project I'll never be fully happy with, because I know there's always more that can be added to it. Right. Uh, I know Microsoft Word, though, it tells you how long you've worked on a document. Um, this one is, if you add up all the hours, is literal months and months. So. Wow. But I mean, that's over years and years, of course. Um, and I think I've been participating in the Kings Island fan site since I was a kid. So that's over 15 years of it. I think my original account on KI Central was from May 2005. So 16 years there. Wow. So I, I think you sort of answered this, but are you continually researching and adding to your history information? You said it, it's kind of a work in progress with your book. Never ends, yeah. Um, it is a little more challenging sometimes now since I'm not as local. I'm not going there every day for work like I was in high school and into college. Yeah. But I love having KI Central and having social media in general just to be able to stay up to date on the park. And as I mentioned, I definitely try and get up there a couple times every year. So it is still being added to. I still add all the new events, all the new happenings. And as I have the chance to research and discover older things, I like to incorporate them into those pages. What is one historical fact that most people get wrong that you would like to correct? <laughs> I like that question. Um, I mentioned the Zodiac one in the closing date, which isn't an exciting fact. It's just something I've noticed was always frequently misreported. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Um, there's a fun fact that some people like to share where Eiffel Tower used to be the tallest thing in the park. When it opened, it was between a reported 330 feet and 331 and a half feet, pending your source. And the ride is now 314 feet, and Drop Tower is conveniently 315 feet. It's one foot taller. <laughs> so there's a popular fun fact that they took the top antenna off of Eiffel Tower so that Drop Tower, or Drop Zone at the time, could be the tallest thing at Kings Island. And it's a really fun fact, and you're like, oh, that's really clever, but it's not true. The top antenna on Eiffel Tower was removed, I believe it was 1994, five years before Drop Zone opened. It was unrelated to the addition of Drop Zone. So even though it's a fun fact, it's not true. And anytime I see it, like, it, I cringe a little bit because it's, I wish it was true. It was fun. <laughs> if, I, if I could set one fact straight, I think that would probably be the one. Right. So on... Twitter and Facebook, there are a couple of channels called Kings Island History, RKI History. What is your involvement with those pages? Yeah, so back in summer 2017, I was up in Cleveland doing a very boring internship. I needed a way to spend the time and I realized I had thousands and thousands of Kings Island photos just stockpiled and gathering dust really. And I decided, hey, it'd be kind of fun to share these. So I made a Twitter account called KI History. I was able to set it up so it would post a photo every day and share some fun information about it. Uh, the Twitter page slowly grew over time. And then a couple years later, I decided to also do a Facebook group, mm -hmm. which then exploded in popularity. Uh, <laughs> I should have thought about this, but most people who grew up going to Kings Island they're more likely to be using Facebook now just based off the age groups who use Twitter versus Facebook statistically. But I was able to create those groups a few years back. And since then, they've 
really just grown in size. I think Twitter last I looked has about 3,600 followers. And in comparison, the Facebook group is just shy of 17,000 members now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's really exciting because the way that the Facebook group is structured and the way Facebook groups are structured in general, they really help create a good environment that people are able to easily share photos and memories and discuss it. And I think because of that, there's been a giant explosion in interest and a giant explosion in participation. Um, you have dozens of posts every week now, a lot of people sharing their old photos, old videos, which is fantastic because a lot of this stuff otherwise may just still be sitting gathering dust. And I think it's really exciting when people have the chance to share it with others. Yeah, for sure. It is nice to have that kind of timeline of information, uh, kind of like we have on KI Central uh, on the website. Um, the cool part about it is it's a dedicated website and um, social media. You know, people can kind of scroll um, and and take a look at it there, but it also can get a little bit mixed in with everything else going on in your feed. So um, it, it's nice, I think, to have those pages that you have created and I enjoy looking at them and seeing them as well. So Robbie, do you got any comments? No. <laughs> what have you learned any new facts from running those Facebook and Twitter pages? Oh, I'm sure I have. I wish I could think of a great example, but it's just whenever people post their photos or videos, you know, you're able to open them and look at all the details and just kind of see how the park was back in old and back when it was older or back when the park was younger. Um, I can't think of any specific examples of like learning something right from looking at a photo. Very minor things sometimes like, oh, I didn't know that they once had a small little stand there, a small little building there, things which would just, you know, completely go under the radar in the big sense of Kings Island history and then building these massive rides. Most people aren't going to give much attention to this food stand used to be located here and then they moved it over. But it is always fun just to see how the park differs from the present day and kind of learning when those changes took place. Right. Another thing I kind of like when I'm looking at that is someone will post one of those really old photos and go, what's this? Or does anybody know any more information about it? And I'll uh, throw in the link to the KI Central history pages that you kind of create and say, hey, here's a little more information about it. I want to say, hey, Tyler is the one who wrote all this. And um, we know it's good and accurate, but I think that's kind of a good segue for KI Central as well to have that dedicated area of information about the rides as well. And that people can go look at a little bit more than hopefully they'll, uh, they'll look more at the timeline and other rides and go oh i have pictures of that too and post more yeah and that was a fun project to work on just uh being able to take every former king's island ride and take the whole timeline and just really have the chance to rewrite and enhance them add a lot more detail and even some of those very small things which again you wouldn't really consider would get swept under the rug of like oh son of beast it went from six cars per train to five cars per train in 2006 and just being able to have a location where all this information on Son of Beast and all the information on all the rides is shared, I think right. is really helpful. Yeah, I, it makes it so people can have a, a good reference point and hopefully learn something and appreciate King's Island more. And as you mentioned, if they uh, are then encouraged to scan their old photos and share them on KI Central, I mean, that's fantastic. Then everyone gets the chance to enjoy them. Yes, because we have a, a really big um, gallery of photos, and if you go to our photo gallery page, there's actually a link there that you can upload photos to us, and we will mark, watermark it for you and add it to our gallery. So if someone who is listening who has some good photos of King's Island history, we'd love to add them to our gallery. We're always looking for more photos to add to our galleries. And I don't know if this is a spoiler, but have we added all those KI Extreme photos? I'm still working with Matthew to get that uh, completed. So I, I'm, I'm hoping he, he's been very busy with work, so he hasn't had a, a big chance to, to get that done. The, uh, the pandemic really 
ripped him up with uh, with work of helping people with working remotely. So anyone that knows KI Extreme closed down, but we have secured all the photos and we'll be posting them on KI Central eventually. So they're not going to get lost into the ether. I, I would love for them to get posted about the same time this podcast comes out. So I've, I've been kind of pushing Matthew a little bit uh, on that. So hopefully uh, when you're hearing this podcast, maybe they'll be there and we'll advertise that as well. This is going a little full circle, but when I was a moderator for KI Extreme uh, and with my passion for Kings Island history, I had the chance to reach out to a lot of people who had shared their historical photos elsewhere, whether it be on their own personal website, or maybe like Flickr or elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I got the chance to ask them like, hey, would you guys be open for us sharing your photos on KI Extreme as well? So I'm glad that KI Central is now taking a lot of those old historical photos and posting them themselves. Yeah, I look forward to having those uh, photos from KIE and integrated into ours. And um, that'll make our gallery a lot bigger and hopefully interest people to come look at more photos Mm -hmm. and post their own. Big circle, like you said. All right. So at this point, um, let's talk a little bit about the 50th anniversary that's coming up next year. So uh, obviously, we've been talking about Kings Island history. Well, next year is another year of history in the making and celebrating the past history of Kings Island. So I, I go to our timeline page and update it as history is happening after Tyler has... Uh, got all the historic information corrected and, and up to date for us. Um, in fact, the 2022 season has already been added to with the information that has been released about the 50th anniversary. So far, we know that seven rides have or will be painted. And those rides include Eiffel Tower, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, Adventure Express, Backlot Stunt Coaster, Drop Tower, Flying Ace Aerial Chase, and last but not least, The Racer. It was confirmed by Don Helbig at the Ace Holiday Party in 2021 that they will be painting it back to its original colors of red, white, and blue. So, Tyler, what are your thoughts on the racer going back to its original colors for the 50th anniversary season? That's incredibly exciting. I know anytime you look at old historic photos or postcards from Kings Island and has the racer in it, it just looks so iconic behind Coney Mall with its patriotic paint job and Exactly. Also funny. Anytime you share a picture of that on any of those Kings Island history sites, like the Facebook group, it is guaranteed to get responses of, I wish they would paint it this way again. Exactly. So I'm, really, I'm really glad that Kings Island is investing in that. I know, especially when you look at wooden coasters right now, a lot of them are going without paint jobs whatsoever. So it's nice to see Kings Island, you know, invest that extra amount to give it a really stunning new look or old look in this case. So that's one of the most exciting things, I think, for the 50th anniversary. Yeah, what do you think, Robbie? I didn't actually hear that, so I'm pleasantly surprised that they're doing that. And I think it's going to look really good, especially with the rhyme behind the racer. It's going to look really sharp. Yeah, someone had posted on KI Central that was at the Ace event. I think it was Ken Bond. Um, I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his screen name, but um, he had posted he was at the party and Don had said that. And so I, I was pretty excited to read that information. So you always learn something new on the forums. Besides the racer, what ride are you most excited to see getting repainted on this list? I mean, Adventure Express is on that list. So obviously, <laughs> I have to one. Um, but I'm also excited to see Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. I think that's a classic Kings Island ride, even if it was. Most of it was rebuilt in the early 2000s, but the original incarnation came from Coney Island itself. So I really appreciate when the park is investing in preserving that ride, making sure it looks as great as it did on day one. Right. And then flying Ace Aerial Chase right next door, even if it's a relatively newer ride, I think it was a little faded. So I'm excited to see it kind of have that pop of color again. And there are um, galleries on KI Central of the... Uh, Eiffel Tower being repainted. I think there's like 50 or 60 photos I've taken. Um, I got some of the Flying Ace Aerial Chase on some of its updates. I obviously don't have a a final picture that won't come until next spring, but I do have uh, a couple galleries of a little bit of that history that's happening. 
So my favorite, I think, in this would be seeing Drop Tower being re uh, repainted. Um, I know it, it it was looking a little faded too, and so I, I the couple of pictures I have seen online that people have posted on different pages, it, it looks really sharp now, especially in the dark when you take a dark picture in the at Winterfest. It looks pretty cool with all lit up. So, uh, 50th anniversary merchandise has hit the park already at Winterfest, if you have already noticed, um, and it can be purchased now. What's everyone's thoughts on the 50th anniversary logo, Tyler? I'm really excited that the park is acknowledging the anniversary and that they do have a logo like they did for the 30th anniversary and I believe the 40th. Uh, I know some people have been a little cynical of the overall look of the 50th. I think it's still exciting, though. I think it definitely emphasizes the 50, which is the big part. Right. I'm also just in general with the merchandise, super excited for a lot of what the park has unveiled. Did you see earlier today, I think they showed the little miniature Eiffel Tower. Yes, and I think there's only a select number of those too. It's kind of a limited edition. So um, hopefully if you wanted one of those, you secured your uh, Eiffel Tower and piece of paint that came off paint chip off of it. Yeah, that was a really cool uh, thing that they did. I love the fact that they have been putting these little little historical things out for enthusiasts like us to purchase. Mm -hmm. I think when the when Vortex closed and they did the track slices, that was a really clever idea. I'm glad to see them acknowledging and respecting the history of the park. And I think a lot of the merchandise they've been introducing over the past couple of years has really gone above and beyond in terms of quality and it's in terms of like you said, catering to enthusiasts to a degree. I think even someone who's not a self-recognized enthusiast would still appreciate and like a lot of this stuff. But I think it's really good for the park having this really great quality merchandise now. Well, I think they've definitely found where their niche of getting money of enthusiasts is. <laughs> 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 because those things like the Vortex, um, pieces that they sold uh, those went fast I, I know they had them in emporium there was a line there's a video out there on uh ki central's um social media i think youtube i took a video of the line just getting into emporium the first day those things came on sale so they were they were running off like hotcakes yeah i was up at the park that day and i just saw people running in the parking lot with their bags to put them in the car <laughs> Yep, people were coming in before the park opened, but when they opened up International Street and um, grabbed them as soon as they could. So uh, it's definitely a money maker for the park and uh, something cool for the enthusiasts that uh, would like a piece of history. What are your thoughts on other ways that Kings Island can celebrate their 50th anniversary? I think acknowledging the history is just a big part of it whether it be through social media posts i know they've been doing the memory mondays on instagram recently which if you haven't had the chance to check those out are really cool because they're highlighting a former attraction every monday showing some really great behind the scenes photos of it um, and then outside of social media i'm really hopeful that the park has historical things throughout the park itself maybe like informational signage like i know king's dominion did for their uh 40th recently um, and I think, as mentioned, painting a lot of those older rides is really exciting because it shows that they are invested in those attractions and they want to preserve them. Right. So I'm just excited to see more examples of that throughout Kings Island for next year. Well, the park's done a good job bringing back some of the classic rides like Antique Autos and the Flying Eagles that they put in uh, Planet Snoopy. They've also been adding back little details like the Glockenspiel on the Fest House uh, that hadn't been working for who knows how long. You probably know, but I don't. Uh, and bringing back the stencil designs on the International Street buildings. You know, that's a nice little touch that they brought back when they worked on uh, International Street and redid the fountains. You see any more of those types of details coming out for the 50th anniversary season? I hope so. I don't know of any specifics. I'm excited for the park to hopefully share some in the near future. I have a hunch on one. Oh, what's that? If you rode the Grand Carousel at Winterfest, mm. you would know that they have removed the band organ front. That's true. I heard that. And they filled it in with a graphic that is incorrect. 
because it says Grand Carousel established 1923, mm. which is kind of disappointing because their spiel on that ride is welcome to the 1926 Grand Carousel. <laughs> I had uh, I had seen a picture of the old band organ was replaced with that graphic. I guess I didn't look close enough to see the 1923. Huh. Well, well it's a, a temporary thing before something exciting like a refurbished band organ makes its return. Robbie, you got to take some duct tape and, you know, put the correct date on there and cover the <laughs> wrong date and fix it. I don't think my duct tape job would look as good as the graphic they put on it. Yeah, but it's inaccurate. Yeah. <laughs> you could just fix the last number, you know. Any other thoughts on 50th anniversary coming up, guys? I know I'm excited to see what all they come up with for this next year. And I, I know that the park is, is planning on a couple of conversations I've had with uh, the PR department that they're, they're planning on doing some pretty uh, exciting stuff next spring to celebrate all season long. So, I am anxious to see what they have up their sleeve because this is definitely a big uh, a marketing thing for them to uh, really get people to want to come out to the park and celebrate their 50th anniversary season. So don't forget to visit our timeline and past attractions pages on the main site. It's learn about Kings Island history. And don't forget to follow the Kings Island history pages on Facebook and Twitter. Those are great uh, resources to uh, follow if you're a Kings Island history buff. Tyler, do you have any more thoughts on that? Um, if you have photos, videos of your own that you want to share, in addition to submitting them to KI Central, I mean, definitely feel free to share them on the Kings Island History Facebook group so that others can enjoy them as well. And Absolutely. I mean, otherwise... We like to uh, uh, share the love of Kings Island, whether <laughs> it's on KI Central or your fan pages and, and that sort of thing. It's always nice to, to read some of that and see people having fun at the park and and enjoying the history definitely a lot of the pictures that i've been able to share on the group on the twitter uh were originally shared on ki central in the forums and i always make sure i credit that and link back to ki, Cent to KI central mm -hmm. uh, but i think it's really great when people have the opportunity to share their old memories and old photos so absolutely I definitely encourage and again, you can always submit your photos and we'll add it to our galleries and it'll be a part of Kings Island history on KI Central. Robbie, you have any last thoughts about the 50th anniversary season coming up? If you could bring back one ride that was removed over the 50 years, what ride would you bring back? Mm, I'm split on this one as well. Um, <laughs> I mentioned Phantom Theater. I had the chance to do it as a kid. I have vague memories of it, but I've seen a lot more photos and videos of it sense and i think the quality of that attraction is just really exciting for a regional park like king's island plus the fact it was unique characters they created for that experience i think phantom theater is really exciting and anytime you post a picture of phantom theater just like people always post about the racer paint job they always comment about i wish they would bring back phantom theater yeah, and yeah. i think the fact it's been gone for nearly 20 years and it still has so much staying power in people's memories showcases how good of a ride it was. Uh, and then besides Phantom Theater, I never got to do the original Bat. I think that would be fun. I don't know if as a coaster it would hold up compared to some of the big crazy ones today. Right. But I think it'd be a really cool thing to experience. Well, one that really intrigues me, and there's really not a whole lot of information about it other than what you have uh, posted on KI Central about it on our history pages is the rotor. I think I would really like to have experienced that ride. Yeah, but like you, you ever, said, that was before I was born. Have you ever been on one, Brad? No, I have not. I rode the one that was at Worlds of Fun like five years ago before they took it out. Mm -hmm. It was a fun little ride. Yeah, that that ride intrigues me, but you know, we'll probably never get to experience anything like that at our park or. Do we know if there's any of them even left? There are. So in addition to loving Kings Island history and spending probably more time than necessary on pursuing it, <laughs> I also just like theme park history as a whole. And one of my personal pet projects is a ride database. It's just mm. something I work on for fun. So I'm setting the filter right now just to be Rotor from Chance Manufacturing. That is Man, he's open. got a database on it. I do. It's, it's concerning how much time I've dropped into this. 
So right now there are uh, at least three um, rotor rides, which allegedly are still in operation. Kenobi Lake Park in New Hampshire actually has one. And then there is a showman who does like the carnivals, they tour their rides. Uh, Kissel Entertainment actually has a chance rotor, which they call Voodoo Experience. Ooh. Um, I don't know how frequently they actually bring it out to the carnivals. And then finally, Sydney's Luna Park out in Sydney, Australia, uh, apparently does have a rotor. I don't know if it was from Chance, though. But you have at least three opportunities to ride a rotor experience because a couple of manufacturers made them. Unfortunately, none of them are at a Cedar Fair Park anymore since the World's a Fun one was removed. But they look like fun rides. I never got the chance to do one either. So I should probably book a plane ticket and get one of these three. Out there of the you way. go. We can make it a KIC event. And speaking <laughs> of relics, I know before Cooney closed all the rides, we went upstairs and where they had like storage and they had one of the old whip cars was still up in the warehouse area. Like the full size whip? Full size whip car. Oh, that's so cool. It was in rough shape because it had been up there for 40 years untouched, but it was still up there. Wow. Wow. I wish that ride had made its way to Kings Island in 72 and they relocated most of Coney. Agreed. Yeah. And there's still <laughs> a few of those whip rides. Uh, a couple of them are in Pennsylvania, but I rode those this past summer and I love them. Mm. I think, uh, I think sometimes people look at old rides through some rose tinted glasses and they think they were more fun than they were. But I think the whip is an exception where it is just as fun as people remember yeah i think it's such a good ride i like that king's island has the little children's version which is linus's beetle bugs right um i i wish we had a full-size one for adults though because there's so much fun yeah well, i love the be... one at dorney mm -hmm. we can start a petition I'll see <laughs> if i can't get a hold of uh mike coons and see if we can get a whip added to king's island that'd be a great flat ride to add back to coney island or coney yeah coney I mean, Mall. if they if they brought back the the antique cars and the flying scooters maybe they can bring back a ride from coney island itself and bring back the whip yeah that sounds like a great idea thank you tyler for spending the time to be on the king's island central podcast we really enjoy talking about king's island history and the upcoming 50th anniversary season in 2022 thank you both for having me it was a lot of fun to talk about king's island history and the 50th anniversary next year Thank you for listening to the Kings Island Central Podcast. KICentral.com is Kings Island's ultimate fan site. For more discussion about Kings Island and other amusement parks, join us over at KICentral.com.